All right, buddy. Today is day 309. Um, we've kind of shot away from making a video every day and just kind of making a video when something important happens. So today is 309. Um, past few weeks, we've been busy with some stuff, family coming over, so we hadn't had much time to work on things, but we had finished wiring up the BMS. All 96 cells are now wired up to those four BMS modules, and all of them work. Uh, we can look at all the cells voltages right here on the... Yeah, so we're, we're reusing the Chevy Volt plugs, and we cut them off and then soldered in the wires from the Thunderstruck BMS units. So we've got four of those for 96 cells. Unfortunately, right now, the BMS is going across the fuse, which is sort of a no-no, because if the fuse blows, you're going to blow up your BMS. So we were just having a discussion. We, we, we know we're doing that right now. We're not supposed to be. So we, we think we're going to, like, cut this fuse out, short these wires, and then move that fuse, like, to the end of the battery. It's somewhere where you draw current from, something like that. So... But yeah, so uh, so what did we see whenever we started talking to the BMS? Uh, right here you can see that this is the, the show cells prompt. So this is every single 90, uh, cell all the way down to 96. And it tells you each individual voltage and how overcharged or how not charged it is to the yeah. Minute. So And so we are seeing um, 96 cells. The standard deviation is really low. So I guess this thing was pretty well balanced when we got it. Um, or I think that's low anyway. It seems low. Um, so we're trying to listen to the CAN messages between the MCU, which is here, and the charger, which is down here. And I'm not seeing any messages really until we plug in the charger, uh, you know, to actually charge. Then the, the charger comes on and we see some messages coming out, but they aren't what I expect. Like, I'm not I'm not seeing messages that I can decode right now, so I'm going to have to, like, email the Thunderstruck guys and try to understand what I'm, what I'm not understanding. Um, but we, we did verify that if we plug this in, the MCU detects it as plugged in, which means, like, that proximity cable and stuff, are, are, I think, are wired incorrectly. It does try to start charging, but of course we don't have the battery hooked up, so it, it doesn't do that very long before it gives up. Um, but the MCU is seeing all that and and, and communicating with it um, for you know a few seconds before it gives up. Um, so that's good. What else did we do? We wired up these three uh, little tiny cables to go to the two bus bars right here, and we wired them up to the contactor. I guess leads on. The very outside of where all the voltages come out. Um, and we plug these in and we've got two contactors to click. So I guess there's two in here and we got both of them. There's, to I think there's four in there. But what we did is we found um, from the service manual, we found some pinouts for, you know, these two plugs. And there are some pins in there for the positive and negative um, contactor. The main voltage contactor. I think they have some other ones for like charging and like a pre-charge resistor or something like that. But Charlie and I are hoping that if we could figure out, you know, which pins to activate with 12 volts uh, in here, that we can reuse the contactors that are in here. Um, and that should just energize this plug. And maybe if we can find this connector, which I have so far I've been unable to find, but if I can find a way to buy this connector then we can reuse this whole thing as our interface and use the contactors that are in the Chevy Volt, which I, I think would be nice. Um, I don't know. We'll see if it's more trouble than it's worth. But I can I, I did order some connectors that I think will fit these on Mauser, but that's not going to be in for a couple of weeks. So in the meantime, we just made some little connector pins to, to fit on there and, and put heat shrink on to make sure they couldn't short anything out. And yeah, like Charlie said, we plugged in the ground wire to our ground bus bar, and we plugged in our... They're not there. Oh, they're not there. We unplugged them for now. But we just sort of tapped them to the positive volts, and you can hear the contactors click. So we're feeling pretty good about that. That might be, that might be good, right? Mm -hmm. um, what else did we do? 
small thing. We kind of had delusions and had told ourselves that we were going to keep all these cardboard boxes that we got and we we're going to start selling all these old Porsche engine parts. <laughs> yeah, we have. I don't know if anybody is interested in Porsche 924 S parts, but we've got an engine in there. We've got a box full of parts on here. We've got a transaxle over there. And we've got just tons and tons of parts from under the hood and things that we're never going to use uh, in like so, exhaust parts. and. We had had a whole bunch of cardboard boxes back here stacked up like above. You couldn't even yeah. see in the back of the car. So I took all the boxes that we didn't need out, flattened them and threw them away. And now all we have is the big battery cover, the muffler, the sway bar, and the CV joints, the old rotors, and then the manual steering rack that we got earlier is sitting right there. We'll, we'll eventually have to put that back in, but... I think that's it. All right. So made a lot of progress with the BMS wiring. That was a lot of wires. Charlie soldered most of them. Now we can talk to all of them. Um, we can talk to the charger, but it's it, we just it's talking some language on CAN that we don't quite understand. So we need to figure that out. We can activate the contactors, which is good. I think if we just keep playing with things and keep uh, rolling the ball around, eventually it's gonna we're gonna make some progress. Um, all right. Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right.